Hello, my name is Richard. I'm the pastor at the King's Church in Adelston in Surrey. And today is an exciting day because today at the King's Church we are doing um, our first feast after lockdown. Previously, before lockdown, we were meeting every month and having a meal, a shared meal where we would invite people from the community around us, people that we knew, to gather together and just come and eat together. And we haven't done that all through lockdown. And so this first Sunday in June is the first time we're doing that. And um, so I wanted to talk this morning about feast and really some of the reasons why we, we do feast. So I'm going to read to you from Luke uh, chapter 14. If you know anything about Luke, you'll know that Jesus spent a lot of time eating in the book of Luke. So this is Luke chapter 14. I'm going to read the first verse and then from verse 7 onwards. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being watched carefully. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honour at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honour for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. So, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you have been invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honoured in the presence of all the other guests, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his hosts, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbours. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you'll be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you'll be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you'll be repaid at the res resurrection of the righteous. So Jesus is at the house of a prominent Pharisee, a prominent religious leader, a community leader uh, in his time and in, in that place. And he's there. And after causing a bit of a stir uh, by healing someone on the Sabbath, which for Jesus is pretty standard, he likes to kind of do that, stir it up a bit. Um, he then tells this parable about humility at a wedding feast. Don't seek the places of honour, but take the lowest place. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted, he says. Now, if we take this parable literally, um, then it's probably not something um, that we're going to be that tempted to do, in our culture anyway. Um, it, it was a, more of a thing back in those days in honour and 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 taking that place of honour. But um, I don't know whether it's something that we'll be tempted to do. I can hardly imagine uh, somebody going up to the father of the bride at a wedding feast and saying, go ahead, shift up, mate. There's room at the top table for me as well. You know, that, that probably wouldn't happen. I mean, I don't think that's ever happened. But um, I don't think it's just talking about wedding feasts. Jesus is speaking more of a way of life um, where we're talking about Christ-like humility, of self-emptying not self-promotion and this arrogant, it's all about me. And that is still challenging to us today if we allow it to be. Um, but this is a parable about a wedding feast and if I'm honest, it could be easy to ignore and move on and just say, well, this doesn't apply to me um, or I don't even know how to apply this. But if, if any of that was how the people who were, were feeling as they were listening to Jesus at the time, he then turns to the host and he says, when you give a lunch or a dinner, and then he carries on. Now, this isn't a parable anymore. This is him giving a direct instruction to his host on how to give a lunch or how to give a dinner. Now, imagine yourself as a host. You've invited Jesus into your own home, um, and Jesus is giving a direct challenge to you, a criticism, really, of your way of hospitality. I mean, you have looked to gain favour with the people who you think are important, um, the people that you've invited, Jesus being one of them. And you've invited them into your home. You've created an exclusive and enclosed environment uh, where nice, acceptable, worthy people can gather. People who are similar to you, um, people who you want to like you and to accept you. And people who you would hope would invite them back to your house in return for what you're doing for them. 
And so Jesus is one of those guests, but he doesn't say this. Oh, thanks for having me. We've had a lovely time. We must do this again. No, Jesus says this, basically, this isn't right. You're not doing this right. You're not doing this inviting thing the right way. You've invited the wrong people for the wrong reasons. So Jesus says, when you give a banquet, you invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. In other words, you invite the people that others wouldn't invite. You invite the ones who usually are on the outside rather than the, on the inside. The ones who've got nowhere else to go. The, the unables, the unworthies. And if you do that, it may well be messy. It may well be uncomfortable. It'll be noisy. It'll be costly. And it'll probably be really unpredictable. But, yep, that's the way of Jesus. That's part of the fun of following Jesus. And that is where the blessing is, says Jesus. And I believe that this kind of gathering is where Jesus is most present. And that's a big part of our vision and our desire for feast. That we, when we gather together to eat, uh, it's a meal where all, everyone is invited. Everyone is included equally. Where people who would otherwise not be welcome um, and not accepted for who they are, they would be welcome and they would be accepted. Where people who are different to each other find a place next to each other around the same table, eating together, where people would find healing and restoration, where people would find community and family, where love is unconditional. That's our hope for Feast, that we would follow Jesus' very direct instructions on how to have a banquet. That's our desire. That we would offer Jesus-style hospitality. Jesus says, follow this and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. So a feast like this, an event like this, is, is something that speaks of hope of the future. A hope in a future that is brighter than now. A, a hope in a future of resurrection and restoration. You see, there's no expectation that we will receive anything in return for what we do here and now for people that we might invite. Um, that's not why we do what we do. The people that Jesus suggests we invite to be with us in these banquets um, have no means of reciprocating or repaying us. And even if they, they wanted to, they, they just can't. But Jesus sets our eyes on a bigger horizon. And to each one who we invite to feast, there is an investment in an eternal future. A blessing that comes knowing that there is a reward at the resurrection. A hope in God's great future. So I'm excited that we can, we can gather together again and start eating together and start inviting people again to be with us. And as we do so, I want us to hold on to the things that Jesus has challenged us with. That as we eat and share together today, we may know the favour of Jesus because we are feasting in the way he'd have us feast and inviting the people that he'd have us invite for the right reasons. Now, if you're watching this uh, before 12.30 on Sunday morning, the 5th of June, then come, you're invited. Seriously, come. Uh, when you finish watching this, get out of the house and come down to the King's Centre. Um, you'll be very welcome to join us and to eat with us. And if you're watching this after it's happened, um, then come next month, because every first Sunday of the month, we'll be having our feast meal, 12.30 at the King's Centre of Marsh Lane in Adelston, and you are very welcome to come. May you know the blessing of Christ as we follow the way of Christ and join in this great hope-filled festival of, of food and, and togetherness in Christ. In Jesus. Bless you. Amen. Thanks for watching. Like I said, if you're watching this before 12.30 on Sunday, come on to the King's Church and join us as we eat. If you're watching this afterwards, 
come on in July, first Sunday in July and the first Sunday thereafter, come and join us uh, at Feast. Um, do like it, share it, leave a comment, you know what to do. God bless.